In today's video, we're gonna go ahead and start working on our enemy. And the first thing I wanna do is get the enemy to logically follow me around in the scene. So let's go ahead and create a prefab first for our enemy. So we've got spheres for asteroids. What else do we got here? Uh, let's go ahead and actually use a cylinder for this one. I'm actually gonna give it a different color. And let's go ahead, drag that onto my cylinder, which I will rename enemy. I'll open it up. I'm just gonna keep it standard. It really doesn't matter. Let's make him red because, well, he's an enemy. All right, now I guess we should make him a little bit bigger. I'll do two by three by two. That's probably too big. 1.5 by two by 1.5. There we go. And I actually want him facing the other direction as well. I want him facing uh, horizontally. Now keep in mind, we want it to, we want the forward to always be on that Z axis. Remember, this is forward. And I don't believe there's a way to rotate the mesh. Let's shrink this up. We can adjust the collider to be on the Z axis, but we can't adjust the mesh, but that's fine. What we can do is go ahead and create an empty, which I will call enemy. Then what we had called, well, enemy, we'll, we'll fix that in a second. And what we had called enemy before, I'm just gonna switch to mesh, even though it has the collider on it as well. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, switch this back to enemy. And we'll go ahead and we'll take that mesh and we'll rotate it 90 degrees on the Z, oh, sorry, on the X. There we go. Now it's facing the direction I want. So let's go down into our scripts. Actually, we don't have a prefab yet, so let's go ahead and we'll make that first. Prefab, bam, there we go. Now let's go into our scripts. And the first script I'm gonna make is that enemy movement script, since that's what we're gonna be working on today. And I'm gonna go ahead, drag it onto the parent enemy game object. Like so, I'm gonna go ahead, save my scene, just to make sure it's there. I guess we should apply as well. And let's go ahead and open up that script. And apparently I clicked player movement. We want enemy movement. There we go. All right, just like before, I'm gonna go ahead and take everything out. And the first thing we gotta think about is, well, we're gonna be following the player, so we're gonna need something to store that player's position in. And since it's the position that we're curious about with the player, we're gonna go ahead and actually just store that transform. Now, there's no reason to make it public. So I'll make it a serialized field. It's a transform, and I'm just gonna call it target. And then I know I'm gonna need an update because that's where we move. And I'm gonna need a few things in here. One is gonna be a method called move. This is our call from update. And I'm gonna have another one called turn. Just so I can keep my movement code and my turning code separate in case I wanna do something different with later. It's just easier if it's in different methods. And I'll just call turn first. I just like the idea of every frame making that slight adjustment to turning before I call my move. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at turn. And I'm gonna go ahead and take my enemy. I'm gonna move him behind me and over here. And while I've got it, let's go ahead and assign what I wanna chase, which will be the player now. So the way I want this to work is he's gonna head directly for the center of my player. And I don't want him to turn right away automatically. I want him to just have like a, a slight turn, so like a, a little bit of an arc. So let's work on that code first. I'm gonna jump back into my script and I'm gonna wanna figure out the position that I wanna rotate to. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a vector three and I'm just gonna call it pos. I'm gonna be equal to whatever my targets, position minus my position. And then I'm gonna wanna make a quaternion which I'm just gonna call rotation. I'm gonna set that equal to quaternion dot look rotation. And what we wanna look at, which is that position that we set up. And now I just need to assign that back into our transform. And we're setting the rotation. But I don't want it to go there right away. I want it to move a little bit each frame. So I'm actually gonna use a quaternion slurp. And we've worked with these before. We know how it works, right? We gotta go from uh, point A, where we are, to the rotation we wanna be at, and then over a certain amount of time. So I'm gonna say time dot delta time. 
But I want to add a clamp to this. I don't want to rotate too quickly or too slowly. I want to be able to adjust that. So I'm going to come up into the variable section here that we have. I'll make another serialized field. It's going to be a float. And I'm going to call it rotational damp. And I'm going to set it to, I don't know, 0.5 by default. And then this time.delta time, I'm going to multiply by that. And that's if I spell it right. Rotate. Boy, I had a rough time there, didn't I? I'm just going to redo it all. There we go. So I'll come down here. Rotational damp times time dot delta time. And since this is a fraction, it's actually going to speed it up the smaller the number. So let's go ahead. We'll save that off. Make sure there's no errors. And let's start it up. So there we go. It slowly starts to rotate towards me. If I go ahead, and I don't want to fly around. I'm just going to move myself around this way. Uh, we can see that it rotates towards me. Great. Let's go ahead and add movement. And movement's actually pretty easy. We've done this a couple times now. That is simply transform plus equals transform dot forward multiplied by time dot delta time. We need some modifier in there and I'm just going to go ahead and put it up above rotational damp. Doesn't matter where I put it up there. It's just where I like it. Float and I'll call this movement speed. And I'm just going to start this off at 10. It's probably too slow. But that's fine. It's exposed in the inspector. We can adjust it there. So I'll add it in here. I'm going to save that off. Let's jump back in and fix our errors. And this is transform not position. Save that off. Jump back in. There we go. Let's start it up. Uh, I do want to follow the enemy here. Let's zoom out a bit. Let's click on it. And there it goes. It starts to follow me. Now that obviously is too slow. I want it to go fast. I'm just flying around in circles and so is it. Now, if you want it to turn faster, remember we can reduce uh, the rotation to make it turn faster. So let's do 0.1. I'm sorry, it's the other way around. It turns faster with the bigger number. So again, season to taste. Uh, movement speed is another thing. Uh, let's do 50. Woo! Now we got a dog fight going. Needs faster turning. That's probably too fast. And of course, I'm making all these edits in the inspector. But anyway, it's really just season to taste. It looks like it can follow me pretty good here. There we go. Well, yeah, that's actually pretty cool now. So I'm at 50 and 2. I don't quite want that much. I'm going to do 1.25 and maybe 25. It was going a little too quick for me, and I didn't like how fast it turned. There we go. Let's go ahead and do a few extra little things to it. Let's go ahead and attach a trail renderer to it. Uh, we've played with trail renderers before. Just go ahead and look at that video if you need help with it. I'm just going to leave it at its default values for now. Woo! <laughs> yeah, see if I can get it turned right around to see it. Well, I can see it's trail renderer. And this will work on all the axes. Let's go ahead and bring it down. And of course, because it's constantly in movement, we don't have a, a speed up and slow down function yet. It's just going to circle us. Let's go ahead. Look at it chase me. All right, I, I'm going to end up sitting here playing around with this for quite a long time. But anyway, there we go. We've actually got it moving. But the only thing in movement I want to adjust now besides optimizations, like taking out the transform and caching stuff, is to maybe add that speed up and slow down function. So when, it, when it's within a certain range, it slows down. And if it falls too far behind, it'll speed back up. And of course, we also have to put some 
ray casting in there because as we start putting all asteroids everywhere we have to make sure that it's not flying through asteroids and it actually tries to go around the asteroids to get to you uh, but that's it we got the basic movement set up right now and uh i guess i'll see you in the next video bye bye let me know down below how you think this series is going so far for the people that are following along do you like it so far do you have any suggestions again let me know down below so if you like the video go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below it really does help me out here on youtube and go ahead and follow me on twitter you're a pretty chatty guy over there when i'm not walking through a forest or being stalked by eagles and falcons lions tigers and bears <laughs>